Plants are the world champions doing complex chemistry. The organic compounds they are producing are used to fend off attack by animals, insects or microbes or to attract pollinators. Many of these organic compounds can also be used by humans as medicinal drugs. The good thing about plants is that they are able to make very, very complex structures, chemicals which are very, very difficult to chemically synthesize. Thereby, we can take advantage of the unique properties of plants. Plant pathway discovery is a key focus area of the Center for Synthetic Biology at the University of Copenhagen, Denmark. In our studies with plant pathways, we realized that these are built in a modular fashion. These modules can be moved from one compartment of the cell into different compartments. By doing that, you can produce molecules which are rare in nature in high amounts. In this way, you can use light and carbon dioxide from the air to produce organic compounds instead of using petrochemical starting materials. So in that way, it's a disruptive technology which will set the agenda in the decades to come. The plant that we are working with is called the Coleus foscoli. It is famous because it produces a compound that comes from the diterpenoid class named foscolin and has a medicinal properties related to heart problems and hypertension. We just managed to identify in which exactly tissue of the root it is accumulated and synthesized. And after we sequenced the RNA of, the, of this particular tissue, we managed to identify uh, the genes participating in the pathway. We re-engineer those sequences to get the metabolic pathway expressed in the chloroplast where photosynthesis takes place, where those enzymes can be expressed and functional. In that sense, we can produce um, high-value compounds like diterpenoids in high amounts in a light-driven manner using water as a primary electron donor, which is a sustainable way of producing compounds. By putting these genes into a heterologous host like the tobacco and then by doing the analysis and looking what compounds we find in the plant, then we can compare it to what we find in the coleus root bark. We can see if we're on the right track, if we have the right enzymes making the compound that we want to do. Once you have these genes or enzymes, you can actually put them together in new ways. So instead of just focusing on the enzymes that you get from one plant, you can start of combining them with enzymes that you get from several plants and then you have a whole new plethora of uh, advanced molecules which might have beneficial uses in the pharmaceutical industry. We are looking into how the individual parts of the biosynthetic pathways are working. And there the major breakthrough has been in the collaboration with nanoscience where we've been able to look into the single molecule level how the proteins behave. And it really turns out to our surprise that they do not all behave alike, even though they are totally the same sequence. They do have their own sort of individual behavior. What we are trying to look at basically is the protein undergoing open and closed motions. To observe this, we need to add some dyes which are highly fluorescent. And when we look at individual molecules, we can look at these highly fluorescent molecules which are blinking. What we want to deduce from this is how the structural motions are linked to the enzyme activity to design new systems that produce new compounds or to design systems that are more efficiently producing valuable compounds. Then we need to know the basics of how these proteins are regulated. Vanillin is the main component in the vanilla extract. It comes from vanilla pod. And we found out that a compound called ferulic acid, which is present in all other plants, is converted to vanillin in vanilla pods. And this uh, reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called vanillin synthase. Today, 99% uh, of vanillin in the market comes from fossil fuel made synthetic vanillin. Our aim is to replace uh, synthetic vanillin by more sustainable production systems. For example, expressing this vanillin synthase to make vanillin in yeast and other microorganisms. Eucalyptus produce many different uh, chemicals in the leaves to help it deal with its environment. What we don't know with the eucalyptus is that if you have a change in, in climate, we don't know how the composition of these compounds changes in the leaf. 
and uh, for many animals that feed on the eucalyptus, this is very critical. So for example, the koala, it only feeds on eucalyptus leaves. If you have a change in the, the toxic compounds in the leaves, that could be critical to the koala's well-being. What we would like to do is look at the eucalyptus and koala interaction. We can use the koala as an indicator species of climate change. And because it's such an iconic species, this will be a great awareness tool to be able to bring focus onto a really critical issue. In the Center for Synthetic Biology, we're doing a lot of basic research, but we like to see this applied. Therefore, we collaborate with many different types of industries. They can all benefit from the way we are producing or developing new production systems or new types of molecules. The work that we do in synthetic biology has potential to have very real impact on people's lives. And so we engage with politicians and industry. And most importantly, we engage in creating a constructive dialogue with the public. We've been part of creating an installation discussing responsible research and innovation. And we are very much engaged in the DIY biohacker community in Denmark and globally. The interaction of many different types of researchers in the Center for Synthetic Biology results in a highly interdisciplinary and active research environment. It's really exciting times to do synthetic biology.